Hello and welcome to the Magic Gooder Open Mic Show on Lee Judges TV. Uh, we're just going to start with this, uh, not necessarily, not necessarily by point of view per se, uh, but at this moment, it's it, it is a hard view to uh, to to at least not uh, give some some attention to from from our viewers. Uh, we've got uh, Garantilis, we've got Adam. Look, man, I let me just Jared. Welcome to the show, by the way. Uh, thanks for coming alongside me. Of course. Um, let me just explain my point of view because we, we are doing this show on uh, on on a new channel. Uh, you know, for the time being, uh, possibly for the for the for the future, we'll see. Um, I know. I and, and this is the fourth time we've done it, and it's the fourth time we haven't won, and the fourth time we haven't scored. So. <laughs> Uh, it's know, a little tiresome. Yeah, yeah, we're we're off to to not the best start, but but let me uh, you know, and and you can do the same. Uh, just kind of explain my point of view on things. I am not Arteta in or Arteta out. Um, I try not to, even though I like kind of talking about it as a as a discussion point. I try not to find the negative in every single thing that's going on because, frankly. Uh, and this is just getting a, a bit personal. Uh, I'm at an age and in a point in my life and I podcast as a hobby and I don't want it to be a source of rage and frustration. Uh, I got a lot going on that, uh, you know, I, I like to at least let my Arsenal enjoyment be about the family uh, that Arsenal has given me, the fun times, the good things. And when we win, I'm in a, in a fantastic mood. So, you know, maybe I come across as, as positive, uh, and maybe that comes across as accepting mediocrity, uh, just because I don't throw my toys out of the pram and I don't, you know, I don't punch a hole in the wall when we lose all that to say, I am as pissed off today as I've been in a long time with Arsenal. I'm, I'm there with you. That was a unbelievably irritating game to watch. And it was one where, you know, credit to Burnley, I suppose they implemented their game plan better than we implemented ours. So it gets you a win, but their plan is to go out there and try and have as little football played over 90 minutes as is possible between the fouls and the time wasting. They're unbelievably irritating to watch. And I, I don't even know how anyone could be a fan of them. I don't care if they're your local, uh, the Chicago fire, or my local, they're the one of the worst teams in the MLS. And I'd much rather watch them kick it around than watch a Burnley play a game. If my son, who's played football since he was four years old and, and has flashed between brilliant and uh, languid uh, at times, <laughs> if he played football like this, like that, I would have him leave the house. Uh, it, that's how bad it is. So um, anyway, this is the way that the open mic show works. Uh, the show is really for the bulk of it about your views. We want to hear your views. And again, they can be positive. They can be negative. You can try to find the bright side. You can go and have a rant if you want. Um, because frankly, today deserves a rant. It's the day so, for it. Absolutely. So uh, so go to GoonerOpenMic.com. That's how you get backstage. As always, we are giving preference to people who, uh, who are doing uh, the following. <laughs> and breaking their duck. Uh, we're gonna. The goal is to see how many different people we can get on this show before Arsenal finally score a goal that precedes this show. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to start off today with uh, someone who just hopped in backstage. I don't recall seeing him uh, on after uh, after the show before. So Fitz, uh, this is your chance to have a say. Uh, you don't look happy. No. You hear me okay? And I uh, and and I get it, you know. And and you also look like you're in bed, which up until about eight minutes ago I was as well. I I went and took an angry nap right after the game because I almost took one during the game. How about you? Right. No. I'm. You can hear me okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're. Yeah. You sound great. Where are yeah. you? Where are you calling from first? Uh, I'm in North London. Um. I've been I've been going to the Arsenal since seventy eight. Season season ticket holder since eighty eight. And this will most definitely be my last season. Um, the wow. the uh, the incompetencies which started in the, in, in uh, Wenger's last ten years at the club have been glaring. Uh, football, what happens on the pitch is no longer important and hasn't been uh, since then. And we 
to put an American phrase, we've dropped the ball and we've allowed all the other teams, the Everton's, the Spurs, the West Ham's, to catch up with us. And I'm sick of it. I'll always support the Arsenal, but I will no longer be giving them my money. Uh, it's as simple as that. Today was yet another dire performance in a season of many dire performances with a lot of dire performances in the first two years of Arteta. And I just don't understand how fans can still want this man to manage this great football club. Um, he, he's, his in-game management is clueless. His, hand, his management of players and their egos are clueless. And that's to be expected because he doesn't have the experience. Well, give, give, you know, an, give an example, and, I, and I'm not saying this because I disagree. I'm just, I, you know, the well, okay, you, I, okay, I'll give you two quick examples. He should be able to handle Gunduzi, a young man who's earning a lot of money to calm him down to sort him out because there's a player inside there. He should be able to handle Abamyang, yeah, because uh, Arteta has been there, bought the video, worn the t-shirt. He uh, shouldn't give preferential treatment to players like Xhaka who threw the captain's arm, threw his shirt down and stuck two fingers up, up, up at the gooners as he walked out. There should be no way back for a play like that. And to top it all with that play, he's rubbish, absolute rubbish. And I've seen some bad players at the Arsenal. He is rubbish. So that's just, that's just a small snippet of how poor this manager has been. Um, him and Edu, should be, we should just get rid of them. They're just How we've not planned months before January, to bring players in when we knew about AFCON. We knew there's a pandemic and players might go out. And they should have planned for it. They should have thought, well, next summer, let's do in January what we were going to do in the summer. Let's do it. Let's go out and do it like, like a big club does. I know nothing. Edu's at a barbecue on his jet skis and, and Artes is just sitting there giving excuse after excuse after excuse. Oh, today's excuse for the window is, oh, it's very hard in, in January to get players, very hard. Yeah, we know that. That's what you paid the big bucks for. Now, yeah. if you can't do it, get out of our club. It, it, uh, see, see what, uh, last thing, let me just, last thing, say, what really annoys me is that our fan base, uh, the acceptance of mediocrity for longevity is appalling. Just because we hold on to a manager doesn't mean it's going to come good. And it's it's proven. And now we're going to offer this guy another two years. It, it's terrible. What's happened to this club since Kroenke took over it, it is appalling. He's destroying this club. And it, for me, it's the greatest football club in the world. And he is destroying it. Well, so, we have, you know, we have agreement on... Say. I don't know what you, want to, what, what you think about that. Well, Fitz, you, you, know, you, you, you have just given the catalogue of... of things that most people are frustrated at. And I, I think you verbalized it to the extent that, that most people would. Now, I agree with you on, on, on a lot of what you said. I, I, I don't agree with you on, a, on certain things specifically in the, the, and let's talk about this a bit and, and, and people in the, in the red room, we've got a couple people waiting. Be, thank you for being patient, but this fan base accepting mediocrity thing that that's something that 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 rubs me the wrong way because i take it personally and I, like i said at the and and not from you to just fits just in general um I, I i don't know that everyone is just happy to be in this position but i i i personally feel and and you've explained fits that you know you, pretty extreme way of going about this which is you're going to stop going to the arsenal you're going to stop giving them your money um I actually applaud that if you feel strongly, because beyond that, I don't know what else to do but just hope and and want the team to do better. Maybe maybe I'm lame. Maybe I'm you know because I'm not throwing my TV out of the window. Maybe because I do feel proud about being on Arsenal and I I I, I buy kits. You know I am I contributing to the problem uh, or am I just someone who just really really loves this club and wants them to succeed because. Because accepting mediocrity is not the same as not going nuts when we lose, um, and it's ironic on a day where I, I I'm trying to make that point. I, I may not look it, but I'm as angry as I've been in a long, long time, and I and, and I literally am annoyed now that I'm going to watch this club in April today. Um, yeah, I think my point about the acceptance of me mediocrity 
but if you go on the uh, if you go if, yeah yeah if you go on the podcast and stuff like that and people are asked direct questions do you think uh, Arteta should be handed a two year extension it should you should look back see what he's done and think eighth place eighth place uh, intermingled with that loads of dire performances and embarrassing losses hell no in fact he should go but no people are going well let's wait till the end of the season i don't think he's done that bad that bad i tell you my just a few years ago going to the arsenal the fans wouldn't stand for it i've been i've been to so many games home and away uh under the last few years of wenger emery and and now arteta we the away performances have been absolutely awful and then what we're faced with is going home a long journey from up north from from the midlands uh, to get home as, as late as you like yeah we're not going by playing we're not going in a nice in a nice coach and most of the time the players don't come and, and clap the fans yeah, I've eaten true. the dirty stuff for this club since uh, since a young man. I've I've had enough. It's just one way traffic. Um, I'll always support the club, but I've more than paid my dues, mate. More than paid my dues. Absolutely. And I'll always support them, but I'm no longer going because all my all my mates I used to sit with, one by one they stopped going. One by one, it's like um, I'm a Catholic and 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 I was the last one in my family to stop going to church. <laughs> that's what it felt. That's what it felt like. One by one, people stop going to church and then you're on your own. And with going to football, it's, you know, it's part of it. the crack is, you know, having a drink before the game, having a drink after the game. All that's gone now because all my, all the six people I sat with have had enough and they've all gone. And I think I've waited long enough and now my last mate's gone. And so I'm Billy No Mates. So I've just decided <laughs> that's it. I'm not sitting, I'm sitting on my own watching this rubbish. But uh, it's, it's interesting you say that because over the last year, year and a half, when the big crunky out movement was going and we saw all the protests and the we care do you stuff, a lot of people kind of shared your sentiment that they didn't want to continue giving money to the club while things were on the current trajectory. So my question to you and, and other people who kind of share that opinion, is there something, what would it take for you to sort of reverse course? Are you just kind of at the point where you're done completely or are there things that you have in mind that you want to see from the club that sort of bring you back? Because that is, you know, an opinion we hear from a lot of people yeah. in the last year and a half. I want I want Arsenal to be a football club again. I want ambition to be on the pitch. Us, us, for a businessman, Cronky uh, uh, seems pretty stupid. If Arsenal are successful on the pitch, win trophies on the pitch, the money will roll in. That's how that's how come Man United are successful, Real Madrid are successful, Barcelona. They're all bringing money, even though Barcelona and Madrid are. Uh, knee deep in debt, but they can always get huge loans because of who they are. And that's all based on football. If we become successful on the pitch, <laughs> man, we would explode, absolutely explode. But Crocky just doesn't see it because he doesn't want to see it because he doesn't understand football. So what would take it? Uh, uh, and footballing ambition, for instance, get rid of Arteta, get rid of uh, Edu and uh, pay the money you need to get in Ten Hag and Overmars. Ten Hag, great with young players, ambitious. This is the sort of project Ten Hag would want. Not Man U, the Arsenal. Overmars, Guna legend. Get him back, he would come back. And, and he would do the business for us. Those two in tandem, a nice long project, experienced people. Not Edu, who was, who was a, all he did was book the flights and, and book the hotels for the Brazilian national team. And, and uh, Arteta was the cone man. That's all he was, the cone man at Man City. Not those two. They don't deserve to have, hold such important places at the Arsenal. But Ten Hag and Overmars, 100%. That would show ambition. But we don't, we don't show any footballing ambition at all. The total lack of it. To give a novice this huge honour of managing the Arsenal. It is ridiculous. It, it just wouldn't happen well, any other big club. I, but, I I think that many would agree with you. Um, and you know the the thing about football and the thing about sports in general is sometimes you uh, you find out the hard way that you've made a mistake, and sometimes you keep trying to find the, gra the the greener grass on the other side, and and you you get deeper off the pitch. Yeah. Um, you know, and and the one thing that I think we can say is that uh, that you've been there. Through, uh, through thick and thin uh, I hope that you'll keep coming back I hope you'll remain part you'll, you'll remain part of the Gooner family no matter whether you're actually physically going to games or not we know that from the worldwide fan base but uh, you know we, we appreciate you coming on and, and, yeah. and sharing your views uh, you're welcome back anytime we're gonna move on Thank to uh, to some other callers and we've certainly got a mix 
of people who both agree and disagree with you, uh, <laughs> you know, in the chat. But that's that's the way the open mic show works. We're not a we're not an echo chamber of similar opinions all the time. So right. appreciate you Cheers, coming boys. on. Mate. Thanks for letting me speak. Take care and, and uh, appreciate uh, you coming. See ya. Ho hope your weekend gets better. <laughs> <laughs> Go. All right. Whew. All right. Well, that is a start. Um, and, that's kind of uh, the thought I thought I thought we would have today. I, I thought a lot of people are kind of going to share that opinion. Yeah, and you know, I I uh, I, I I do tend to interrupt people uh, in general, <laughs> as you know from podcasting with me for uh, for many many months. Um, I didn't really want to interrupt him too much because you know, again, it, I, I'm not trying to steer the conversation one way or the or, or the next. I think I saw a comment about uh, you know the switch of channel uh, being like like whiplash or something like that, and I think. <laughs> If I interpreted it correctly, it's someone who who came from uh, from probably from the Highbury Squad, which I missed today because I had to take a nap. Uh, I just wanted to flush that game away. Uh, so anyway, if we've gotten off to a negative start, we'll see where we continue because because uh, I'm telling you, I'm I'm livid with that game. I I really really am. Uh, next, we're going to go to True Gunners TV. Uh, I believe we've had you on before, mate. Uh, good to see you again. Wish it was under better circumstances. <laughs> where, where are you feeling on the uh, on the spectrum of, sh of from you know of of awful to shit? <laughs> um, not really anywhere in between, mate. Because this is just Arsenal, isn't it? It's a typical Arsenal performance uh, under pressure to uh, get three points, knowing that Manchester United won their game yesterday, knowing that Spurs. Uh, a, a point above us with a game in hand as well, knowing that we're out of both domestic uh, trophies, so literally top four is all to play for. And then we churn out a performance like that against bottom of the league, Burnley, who have only won one game all season. It's just typical Arsenal. So I'm kind of used to this. I really am. But um, yeah, bye-bye top four. And what should happen as well is bye-bye Mikel Arteta because... I look at that game today and Burnley, we all know, are a tough team to break down. We knew that they was coming to the Emirates today and they was going to set up and be really tough to break down and try and hit team on the counter and basically play for a point because they do that season in, season out at Arsenal. And yeah, they're an awful team to watch. But when they get their set up right, they're hard to break down. Now, Anybody who's played football at a decent level or anybody who's managed football at a decent level will know that in order to break teams down like that, you have to move the ball quickly. For the entirety of the first half, it was slow, lethargic, and just we wasn't at the races. We didn't look, in, we didn't look like we could break Burnley down one little bit. Then in the second half... Start of the second half, Burnley start creating a few of their own chances and we're sort of holding on a little bit. Um, and then 10 minutes after that, we have the best spell of the game. I think because we, I think for, for those 10 minutes that you're talking about, we had, I think, 92% possession mm -hmm. and the 8% possession that Burnley had was all uh, their goalie, their, their, their goalkeeper just wasting time with the ball at his feet. I mean, exactly. it was one, one way traffic and we couldn't break through, not at but all. But then 10 minutes, there was a difference in the way that we played. We moved the ball quickly. We started creating chances. We started having shots on goal. Okay, fair enough. Lacazette, you should do better with your two chances and that. But there was one player in particular that spurred us on for that moment, and that was Emil Smith-Rowe. Emil Smith-Rowe brought that energy. He brought that quality. And then this manager takes him off for Eddie and Ketia. And then I'm sit I'm hearing people sitting here on or on Twitter and Arsenal fans on Twitter saying, oh yeah, but it's not the manager's fault. Are you, are you what you need your head testing? You really do. And then we're talking about offering this guy a new contract. Are you mad? I I, I will say, and again, I I've I've been all about give Arteta until Christmas then which was said last summer. Uh, once we got to Christmas, and uh, honestly, I think we were playing quite well at that particular point in time. I said, give them until the end of the season. I mean, at, at this point, we're, we've we've had about the worst January you can have, 
and it just doesn't make sense to me to be talking about now now the club didn't announce they were giving an extension it's somehow leaked out during the press that they're giving them that, that that they're considering or about to give them an extension i don't know how that happens uh i do know but it would happens. be a typical arsenal move though mike because right. we've oh, seen it would be. And, and, and and it just why invite that kind of criticism on you right now why take the worst spell like this isn't releasing a kit this is like taking a dig at half of your fan base and then also speaking of kits, right? What's ironic is you talk. We're talking about how we've had the worst January. We release a kit, <laughs> a white kit, and then we release a slogan saying "No more red." But yet we've had more red cards than we have goals <laughs> in January. Do you know what I mean? No more red Arsenal, but we've had players sent off for the last God knows how many games. And today, yeah, we managed to keep eleven players on the pitch, but there. The thing that annoys me the most is there was enough. Like he's coming out of excuses again, Arteta. I've seen I've seen what he's had to say after the game. He's talking about the January transfer window. We need players, and we're trying. We we're trying, but it's a difficult window. There was enough quality on that pitch today to beat Burnley. He got it wrong. Arteta got it wrong, and he's got it wrong for the majority of the season where we've had poor performances and. Nobody can sit here and tell me, yeah, okay, you look at the table, we're in with a shout for the top four. But if you ask Manchester United fans and you ask Tottenham fans, what, how do you rate your season so far this, this, this year? They'll say, we've been, we've been appalling. So the only reason that we're in with a shout for the top four in the first place is because them two teams in particular have been shocking. So that should not be a reason to keep this manager in a job. Well, it should be. Uh, so, so Jerry, let me, let me have your view on this because I mean, the way I look at the Premier League season, even in 2000 and what was it? 16 when Leicester won and every other, every other club had mm -hmm. a, had a down year. Um, when clubs have a down year, it, it can be down to the club. It can be down to the quality of the league. Um, you know, the, there's a reason that it's not just the same two teams dominating every single year, sometimes with a third thrown in, like in like in Spain. Um, there's a reason that Man City doesn't go completely undefeated. Uh, they don't go invincible, and in fact, they don't even beat a Southampton team yesterday. Because on any given on any given day, to use another American phrase, uh, just without the Sunday part, um, anything can happen. But how is it that with these 11 players that played today with even in game, you see, you see Ramsdale, you know, kind of just looking at Gabriel, like, what are you doing? And trying to like get some energy into him. You see, um, you know, you've seen uh, Tierney kind of trying to get the, the, the players to move forward. You see them telling each other what they're doing wrong. So, is it Arteta that's getting these things? I mean, I'm not claiming Arteta has the perfect game plan and it's all down to the execution of the players, but I am implying that I don't think that these these lack of of breaking down Burnley, like these these shocking performances, the Everton game, I don't think it's purely down to him being a bad coach because we're actually seeing the players self-correct themselves and 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 get in each other's faces sometimes, which I think is good. It's needed in the moment. But it, to me, it shows that, you know, maybe they're just not executing the game plan. So, Jared, long question, as always. But, um, <laughs> you know, do you – at what point do you say it, it's still a painful, long process because the two ingredients, the coaching and the players, haven't perfectly melded together yet in a way that clicks? Yeah, And, and I think today it was a combination of, of both – I don't think Arteta came in with a perfect game plan by any means when you're putting that many crosses in against a Burnley side that you know is going to pack it in. They're big, they're physical in the middle. That's not one of our strengths, you know, going forward in the air. So I think that lacks, you know, a little bit of foresight to, to try and attack them that way. But I think it's also on the players. We, we did see, um, I think it was about the 19, 20 minute mark. We saw one good sequence by Arsenal where there was four, five, six intricate passes played in quick succession, um, kind of to his point that he made earlier when they made those quick passes, they weren't taking touches and just moved the ball quickly. They immediately got a good opportunity. We didn't capitalize on it, but it showed what needed to be done to break that team down and get chances. Now, 
I'm sure Arteta would have loved to see more of that and probably encourage more of that. And the players on the pitch weren't able to get it done. So I don't think the fault falls in on one more than the other necessarily today. I don't think it was a good performance by Arteta or a good performance by the team as a whole. But a lot of that is a trickle down effect to our poor management of January thus far. When you have a thin squad and it's, you know, there's, in, in any year, you need to make sure you've got some depth, but especially in a COVID year where players can be out at a moment's notice, you may find out the day before a game they're unavailable. You've got a plan and have a contingency plan in place for when players are out, whether it's due to COVID or our midfield getting red card after red card after red card. You know we're going to have games where we're shorthanded. And for example, when you let Ainsley Maitland-Niles go on loan, now you've got Emil Smith-Rowe starting not in his best position uh, for the entire game. He didn't play his best game, but th- that's not really where we need him to be effective. I-, I think if you keep a player like Maitland Niles, or we do have a midfield player behind that allows us to either play Smith Rowe farther forward, or this certainly is a game where wouldn't it have been nice in the 75th minute to have him come off the bench and attack a, a team that's a little bit leggy at the end, like we've seen him do so well and get goals at the end, but you or play right back because t- or play right back because Tomiyasu is, you know, has finally got the Arsenal injury bug and, and apparently he's not completely opposed to playing right back because he's done it for Roma. So. Wouldn't it have been nice to see Aubameyang come off the bench when we need a goal? <laughs> you know, a goal-scoring striker that this manager's just dashed out of the team. And um, nobody really knows why, which is, you know, it's fair enough. The guy, as far as we're aware, he's been turning up late and, you know, this, that and the other. Strip him of his captaincy, yeah, I agree with. But how can you... Not even put this guy on the bench. I mean, like, if we're in trouble, like we was today, we need a goal, you can call on him. He's a goal scorer. He has been a goal scorer for the last three, four years. If yeah, that, I, I'm if not... The chances that fell to Lacazette today falls to Aubameyang, I am putting my house on it that they're in the back of the net. That's the I'm, difference. See, and 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 I think where where you and I differ is is in... I, based on what I think the problem with this club was under Unai Emery, and and and, and I had no crit- criticisms of Unai Emery as a coach, and a lot of people are, are are bringing his name up again today, because it's the easiest way to uh, to beat Arteta over a stick is to say that you feel bad for for Emery and that Emery was was uh, was treated unfairly and blah blah blah. The biggest part that that he did is he allowed a culture to to continue to infect the team. I think that was starting in our in in Wenger's later years because Wenger had a pretty lax management style, and when structure was needed, Emery just kind of came in and was kind of this guy that was easy to push around, even though tactically he might have been astute. Um, I the things about the process that I do trust, if we're going to call it that, are the are mostly the things off the pitch, uh, the things that have changed inside the football club, uh, the thing the the personnel the uh you know and and when you see this team really moving and playing together like we did in december you you have to point to the culture of the club is improving uh that's one reason why i don't just sack him for a string of poor performances i don't necessarily blame him 100 percent for a performance like today when when clearly the tactic i mean i'm not saying i don't blame him zero percent I'm saying I don't blame him 100% because clearly today there there was a plan that was different than what we saw on the pitch. It wasn't good enough. These players were told to to cross 89,000 times and it didn't help that we, you know, we got 19 corners against a team that really just kind of laughs at defending a corner uh you know because of their 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 height and their quality. So defensively anyway. So, you know, I it, I don't like the whole, well, what, then what are we going to do? We're just going to bring in these random people who we assume will do well because they've done well at Ajax, who, you know, Ajax is a team that's completely set up to to allow them to work in a certain way where, where Arsenal isn't. Uh, so, I'm, you know, again, I'm, I'm kind of rambling about that in a, set, in a sense, but I don't like the, the talk of extending him for another two two seasons. I do think that because he's the manager and not the coach, uh, you do have to just look at everything in a long frame and say two and a half years. If it's eighth, eighth, and seventh, if it's eighth, eighth, and sixth, uh, not good enough. 
and you have to look at that and, and, and rip it up and start it all over again. But, you know, there is still so much to play for in this season. There's 17 league games left, less than one a week. Rested team, injury should hurt us less than they would if we were in multiple competitions going forward. And, uh, you know, it, it is – there's still a lot to play for, and I, I don't think you rip it up in the middle. I think you have to reassess in the summer. That's my personal view. This is the other thing as well with Arteta, right? And then, <laughs> and then after this, we'll, we'll need to move forward. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> um, this is the other thing with Arteta as well. Like He's supposed to be this real good coach, and that's why we brought him in from Manchester City, because of, because of his coaching skills. And um, every time we win a game, we've always got our best squad like when i say best squad i mean he has to have every single player as in ramsdale tommy asu ben white um gabriel tierney every single player has to be available in order for him to win a game we haven't seen him win a game when we're missing one or two players yet do you know what i mean like top coaches like a conte like anybody like that can win games when they are missing players. We haven't seen Arteta do that. He can only win with his best 11 out on the pitch. Well, then is Alba in our best 11? Is Alba in our best 11? I don't we, know. Because we've done quite a good job of winning without him up until the yeah, last Yeah, we week. have. But like I said before, you know, uh, and I'll say, I've, say, I've said it on previous streams over channels as well. The thing that saved us this season, right, and it's ironic really because the past two to three seasons, we've had strikers that score goals and we have no goals from midfield. This season, we have strikers that don't score goals, but we're we're bagging goals from midfield, left, right and centre. You've got players chipping we in. Were up, we were up until we started doing yeah. this show. Now, and the biggest we the show, we haven't scored yet. is when them goals start drying up. And the goals have started drying up from midfield and it's starting to show now that we are not getting goals from the striker's position. One thing about Aubameyang is he does score goals. So, yeah, okay, they've had a falling out. But you cannot tell me that that guy cannot at least make the bench. And if, like today, we're struggling to break a team down but we're creating chances, you, surely I, you can bring Aubameyang on. And he will score one of them chances, I guarantee you. And, and, and that was really the point I was trying to make in my last uh, ramble was was I don't know what was going what the extent of what's going on with with Aubameyang, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on Arteta for not playing him if 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 there's a reason. Uh, and 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 the same is true with with Wenduzi. People just you know again it's the grass is always greener uh, on the other side argument. Uh, Wenduzi is doing so great at Marseille. He would have done great here. Yeah, but. Again, it's 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 a chemistry set. Football is more about chemistry than it is about quality. Sometimes uh, depends on the, the the circumstances, but you need that chemistry. Without it, you know, you've just said without your best eleven, you, we we don't play well. Well, without the right feel at the team, without the right chemistry at the team for a young team, especially where you don't have quality thirty-two year old veterans who have the respect of everybody in the locker in the dressing room. Um, you need to be able to have order. And Sophie says Emery was not given the ability to to take control of the team. The players were given the ability. I think ability just finds itself. Uh, you know, control mm -hmm. finds itself one way or the other. And uh, and Arteta has has worked his ass off to basically have the club in his form control this team and and and, and make points. And to allow when you start allowing Abba's transgressions whatever they are to to be overlooked then you know you lose control of the team that said granite Jacques is the the sore example of the opposite side of that with him and i will readily agree that uh i think he should have been gone the moment he he threw his 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 shirt to the ground and i have no other explanation for why he continues to get played and favored other than uh he has nude pictures of our of of arteta Kroenke, and adu's mother uh, I think I mean, that, that Jaka continuing to me is just highlights what we've talked about, the lack of depth. If we had anybody decent to fill that spot, I think he would have been gone a lot earlier. And he gets a lot of leeway because we're so thin in that area that they're afraid to let him go because our performances without him have been even worse than the games with him when he's made it the full 90 anyway. 
it's almost like like our lack of 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 depth is an intentional thing to try to get people to 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 recognize that Jock is needed. Well, he's he's not needed. He's just he's needed now because we're so so thin. Mm -hmm. But like, I tell you what, I was thinking right because we watched Xhaka get sent off against uh, who was it against Liverpool. We watched uh, Party get sent off after a 16 minute cameo against Liverpool. It's almost like the players are screaming out. Sign some fucking players. Come on, we need midfielders. <laughs> we're, we're not good enough. We need help. And then they're all gonna, and then they're all going to leave because we don't have Champions League football. Uh, all right, mate. Take care. That, to, to let us know where we can find you. Uh, tell us about your channel again. Yep, yeah, uh, True Gunners TV on YouTube. All Arsenal content. Head over there. Excellent. Well, thanks for uh, for coming on the Open Mic Show and sharing your opinions. No worries. Off we go now. For a uh, for another, I don't know what the hand signals are, Fergus, uh, <laughs> but uh, but I think he's preparing to be coming on screen. So uh, so I'm going to bring him on. Uh, Chelsea have just scored. <laughs> Chelsea, have... finally some good news today. Oh, uh, sorry, see, I, just... oh, yeah. I don't I don't have my my uh, I don't have Peacock on, so uh, so I'm missing it. So and you might I've got something called it. IPTV. It works wonderful. Yeah, you might, you, 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 you might want to turn your TV a little bit so that we don't get a copyright strike for broadcasting the game, though. <laughs> as much as I'd like to see it, I think I think that uh, you won't you won't get it from there. Fergus, uh, at the game or not today? Yeah, just got back. Thank, let me turn that off. Hang on one second, because otherwise you'll complain. Yeah, just got home. Um, very. Oh, what's happened to my screen? Hang on. Um, uh, yeah, very cold, very flat. Uh, one of the worst atmospheres I've experienced at the um, at the Emirates uh, this season. I think yeah, the Norwich, the, Wat the Watford one, the, the uh, I think um, earlier before Christmas was flat as well. But it's, they're normally Sunday kickoffs anyway. Go on, you're going to ask me. You mean, you mean you mean the one that I the one that I was at? Um, uh, the, do you remember? Let's let's <laughs> let's d dig into the atmosphere a little bit because you're you know you can speak to it. I I texted you about 15 minutes into the Liverpool game on Thursday okay. to find out what the atmosphere was because it, you know, everyone with it this week where, where the Arsenal fan base were unified against the, the press, against the FA, against the PGMOL, against, against everybody because of, uh, you know, this Tottenham's postponement and all of us, and, and, and we're just expecting an absolutely incredible, crazy, raucous atmosphere on Thursday against Liverpool and from what I understand, you said it was a pretty good crowd, but a bit of a different crowd, which you would expect for a League Cup tie with tickets at yeah. you know ten quid and and uh, and a lot younger fan base there. But apparently, this this energy did not carry over into the into the home support. It did. It, it did to start off with, and I, I, I'm not going to really go on hugely on the Liverpool game because you wanted me to come in on this one, but the Liverpool, only because we messaged. Um, when you messaged me 10, 15 minutes in about um, uh, the game and what the atmosphere is like, and it was outstanding, was really loud for the first 20 minutes. Uh, and you said it came across really well on TV that way. Um, but once Liverpool scored that first goal, uh, the crowd, who aren't uh, a regular crowd, they just sat there and just ate the popcorn and just, uh, you know, waited for it all to come. Uh, and to be honest, it was a little bit like that again today. There was a lot of people who couldn't make it. There was some train issues coming in from the north. Uh, for some fans coming in from style like Peterborough, Trev couldn't make it. Uh, quite a, uh, quite a number of people couldn't make it in, and there was a lot of different people in different seats. So I do think that makes a difference when they move the game from a Saturday uh, last minute to a Sunday, because uh, uh, it was only moved for, what, with two weeks' notice. So that really affects people's plans, work plans, diaries, and so on. Uh, it was it was a flat day. Um, it was an awful game. The first half was really really dire. Uh, but you know what? It's a great day. It's a fantastic day for the Arteta uh, Arteta out brigade. They, they will absolutely be creaming their pants right now about it. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and Fergus, I'm sorry. Jared and I are laughing because we're both trying to put up the same. We're, we're like literally neg negating ourselves trying to put up Lone Star Londoners uh, thing. And you know this from running a stream yard. If you have two hosts and, it's and an you click it, it just goes on and goes <laughs> off. And they happen like twice. And then we both waited a second for each other. And then we both did it again. And it happened a third time. So anyway. <laughs> And London uh, Lone Star is, is, is spot on. It is the first point. But listen, uh, we went up. Um, it's when I, saw, I thought Ga Gabrielle was uh, captain material uh, when we saw him up at um, Turf Moor. 
how many times both at Arsenal and at Burnley have we struggled against this side? They're a physical side. Arsenal aren't a physical team. They are huge. Uh, ben Mees, huge. How, how, how do you pronounce um, the other centre half's name? Tarkovsky or whatever? Oh, Tarkovsky. Uh, Tarkovsky, that's it. Yeah, mm-hmm. he, he's a man mountain as well. And mm-hmm. you've got somebody like Eddie and Ketia going up against him. Lacazette, he's a big lad, but he's not that tall. And Lacazette just looks so, so slow today. And Martinelli ran his socks off uh, throughout the game. Well, especially in the first half, because they, they flipped ends with us. Normally, we, they're playing to the North Bank for the second half. And, you know, every time yeah, teams do that... Right? Sorry? It, it it doesn't seem random at all. It doesn't seem like it's even up to a coin flip. It seems like it's always us shooting at the North End in the second half, except for maybe once out of every three or four months. I don't, I don't it, get it, that. It's whoever wins the coin. They can either uh, kick off or choose which way they go. So they, they chose to flip it. And teams that do choose to flip it generally um, make it a little bit more difficult for us for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, but we did struggle. Um like I said, so slow. Martinelli was running up and putting balls in. There was nobody in, in the box, and nobody was actually up behind him supporting him either. So there wasn't a, a, a Tierney. Uh, there, was, there was nobody else following up um, from behind. I, I think it's 4-1, four, 4-1 one, four, one sort of formation, if that's what we play. But that's what Sky said we, we played with the Conga sitting on front of the back uh, back four. I don't think that helped. Um, and I think, I think uh, Odegaard... Uh, he, I, I've, I, I questioned it. I never questioned him. I, I, I didn't see what everybody else thought was so fantastic about him uh, until about five or six games ago, and I just see him growing and growing. And today, he looked like almost captain material. He was, he was talking to players. You tell them, no, you move the ball here, you do this, you do that, and you can see why he's leader for his, for his country. And I think in, in time to come, he's definitely got to be a contender uh, for a captain. But I, I think having him playing in the slight, slightly, I think he plays slightly deeper than Smith's role. Uh, it cuts out Smith Rowe and it doesn't bring out the best in, in Odegaard. Um, people talked about Maitland Niles, Jarrod, you talked about it. It would have been great to have him. Really? Do you think Maitland Niles, it would have been, listen, it would have been good to have him in the squad. Don't get me wrong. But do you really think he would have made, made that much of a difference? He's had one, one really good game for Arsenal. Really, only had one good game. Yeah, and, and, and I don't mean that his individual performance is going to push us over the top or anything like that, but kind of like you just alluded to with the p- positioning of Odegaard and Smith Rowe, I think with a player like him included, it allows you to get those guys kind of in their preferred areas where they're more effective. I don't think yeah. Smith Rowe did a lot today other than that one dangerous sequence at the end where you know he did what he does. He ran at the defender, he used his pace, he got in a dangerous spot, but where we had him for the majority of the game, he just wasn't able to do that. So I, I just don't think it was a good fit for him because we don't have the midfield to back it up and allow him to kind of stay in those areas. No, no, no. And, and, you know, also, I, I think people are, are saying uh, that Arteta, listen, I, I'm more on the Arteta out or the Arteta given some more, uh, sorry, the Arteta in or the Arteta more time than anywhere near an Arteta out sort of uh, position. So I think everyone knows my position in in that sense. But for people to come on here and to be uh, saying Arteta cocked up and he should have done this, I, we're standing in the North Bank. Um, we've made the only substitution that's really possible for us, which is to bring Smith Rowe. I, I probably might have even risked taking Lakonga off and just changing around the whole back formation a little bit. Maybe Ben White in that hole or something. I don't know. But to take uh, Smith Rowe off and put Eddie and Ketty on to have two striking options on the pitch was the only thing he could do. We had nothing else. We could have maybe brought on Nuno Tavares. Some people love him, some people hate him. You know, you could have brought him on and maybe done something. I don't know what else he could have done. Arteta was, whichever he did, ah, oh, good. That's really nice to you. We're cheering for Chelsea on an Arsenal post-game show. This is basically what our world is 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 up to. Well, we'd be we'd be we'd be doing that anyway because they're playing Tottenham, and I'll, I'll cheer. Yeah, I know, I know. It's just it, it's uh it, it's just making my day even worse. Although I, Spurs winning this game would have made the day complete shit. But um, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you. I just so, yeah, no, there was there was a guy a few rows. He's made the substitution, and we're like 80, 83 minutes in. Uh, their goalkeeper has taken 25, 26 seconds to take a goal kick. The referee won't even look at him, won't even blow the whistle. The referee's afraid to look at anybody in the eye. All he's doing is staring 
at the fourth official the whole time. I've never seen such a gormless referee in all my life. It was like, do you, do you know? Do, do you know? You, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but this referee, I looked him up. How, never, how, do, how do you pronounce C O O T E? It's not the word I think, is it? Coot. Coot. Oh, no. Coot. I thought it was another word. <laughs> no. no. Sounds and, and, and David, I looked up David Coot because I've never seen him ever before. Maybe I just haven't been paying attention, but. Apparently, this guy was one of two referees that were sacked on the like the eve of the 2017 season by PGMOL. One of them was sacked for something that he was found guilty of, and I don't think he's ever refed again. This guy, David Coote, had allegations of misconduct. I don't know what kind of misconduct, but he was a ref in the championship um, who wasn't able to keep his job. Apparently, he worked his way back in and now is refereeing you know, pseudo Premier League games involving Arsenal because they figure, you know, inexperience can now be their uh, can now be their excuse for corruption. There was a tackle on Kieran Tierney. I didn't see. I've only seen the still of it, but that should have been a red card. There was, yeah, um, yeah was Tierney's a, there was a ta- twenty six. There was a tackle. Yeah, there was a tackle on Saka where number twenty three for them physically didn't go for the ball. He just pushed the guy in, in the side of his face and pushed them over. That's no intention to play the ball. He didn't even dish him a yellow. Number 18 and number 8, which is, is West, it Woodbine Westwood, and... Uh, Westwood is number 18. Westwood, he, yeah. should have been off the, he should have been off the pitch. He should, he should have been about three or four. Yeah, uh, listen, I understand letting the game run and so on, but the referee was absolutely gone. So we had him and we had Atwell against City. Look, the PGMLO have got a huge amount to answer for, for the quality of bloody... Um, um, referees they've got in there. The use of VAR and the VAR referees. The final thing I'd like to talk about is um, the last chat was on was talking about Abamyang and having Abamyang on, and Abamyang would have been a great option to have on the pitch. Really, Abamyang has scored four goals in the Premier League uh, this season, and okay, that's maybe he's fallen out of favour with the manager, maybe he's has issues. But if we look at last season where there's no crowd and everything else, he only scored ten goals in the Premier League. He had three goals in the FA Cup, I believe. And in this season, he's had three goals in in the um, in the League Cup, which was a hat trick against a poor West Brom. You know, he is not going to be the man. We put him on front of open goals, and he still couldn't score. I don't think he would have ha- had the fight. I've been up for a very physical battle against uh, a very just banks of. It felt like banks of ten against us. Um, uh, with and, this, and this is this is where I think you and I generally tend to agree on on this what if or or you know it, it is always easy to say okay uh, when Doozy was banished from the club we saw one thing he did we heard about another thing he did we're not quite sure about the other things that he might have done or not uh, but we'd be doing better if he was back we'd be doing better if we didn't loan out Saliba. We'd be doing better if we hadn't sold. Would, would, would we? Saliba, Saliba has kicked so many games. He's played so I, many games in the Premier League. You know, so yeah, we, I, I, we really I'm know just saying, I'm just saying, any yeah. any time that there is something that isn't available to us, um, whether it's Obama Yang for whatever reason, whether it's Mesut Ozil back in the day, whether it's whether it's Gwen Doozy, it doesn't doesn't matter. Um, it's it, it it gives energy to anyone who wants to use that specific situation against against the club because uh, clearly uh, having made all those opposite decisions we would be winning everything right now yeah, i just I had I conversations know. today i had conversations today with people talking about accepting mediocrity and so on you know the, the author of the phrase accepting mediocrity uh talking about like you know the transfer window and we both agreed that you know every player with maybe the exception of maitland niles but we still wanted maitland niles to move every player that's been moved out of the club this january we all wanted gone we all said we're surplus to requirements so mm-hmm. the only issue is is getting the players in, and we're now uh, Arteta had nothing else to work with on 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 um, in in the game that that he had today. The, the the issue lies further up the food chain in the sense of who's doing these deals and um, when 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 they're going to get these deals done. Transfer deals in January are always hard to do. They always come in at the end of the month, and if somebody's going to say we'll take such uh, Mary off your hands, we'll take uh, Maitland Niles off your hands. Well, you know, you've got to say, yeah, just we'll we'll pack, package them up and send them straight away. Well, yeah, and I think, so, especially the end of this month, since we have so few games, I think when they looked back after the uh, Liverpool game, they thought, you know, Burnley this weekend they're sat bottom of the league. It's a game we should be able to win with what we have. So they don't, they didn't approach it with that urgency that we need a player right now. With the thought that we've got till the end of the window after today, we don't have another game till February 10th to integrate people. 
And I think they kind of wrongly got a little bit comfortable thinking they would be able to beat Burnley at home, which obviously you should do, but it's proven to be pretty costly. Well, at the end of the year, these two points before, are going to be pretty valuable. We've struggled before, I guess, with the answer Highbury mm-hmm. squad's uh, question at the pump. I'm not blaming the referees. All I'm saying is to the PGMLO, or whatever they're called, that the standard of re- refereeing in this league is absolutely abysmal. VAR, you look at Man, Man United versus Villa, four minutes, get an offside. There's so many of them that are so absolutely crap. So that's who I'm, I'm, I'm saying well, that the referees and, are poor. I'm, I'm not I, saying uh, the referee did have a, a bad game, but that doesn't matter. You play, both teams play against that same referee. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not well, saying and, that. And, and I left this up here because I, I wanted to similarly comment that, you know, discussing the shitness of a referee isn't the same as blaming them and taking blame away from Arsenal for a crap performance. Uh, you know, it, it's like you, you can talk about how the referees are corrupt, inexperienced, sacked from their position and now refereeing Arsenal games and point that out without, you know, I don't think any of us are, are, are suggesting that we would have, that we played well enough to win if not for the referee in this game. Uh, the problem that we had today, the, the long and the short of it is, we put 11 men on the pitch and we had nothing to change it up. When we found out what they were doing, we had no way to change up the formation. We, we, we tweaked with slightly at half time and, and, and we got better at half time. But there's no aerial threat. You know, there's nobody, in, Lacazette's so slow and going so deep that he's never on the penalty spot when, when he's needed. You know, and he should have taken his chance. Smith Rowe was given an opportunity right in front of us. Uh, in the first half, and he stood there and got, oh, shit, what do I do? Do I shoot? Oh, no, I'll tell you what, I see Saka. Everybody has to pass to Saka. Every ball has to go through Saka. He's a great player, but everything has to go through Saka. I'm with you, and, and I'd be curious to know what your guys' thoughts are. It, it's been mentioned before. I actually like Martinelli on the left wing. I like him playing wide because he's very dangerous from there. But when you see a game where you go 60, 70 minutes and we're creating nothing, Lacazette's not really involved, he's not creating any chances, do either one of you want to see Martinelli moved centrally, even for short stints, just to try and create something? Because that's something that really hasn't been done this year. But, you know, if, if you were to guy who created anything, he would be high up on the list. Talked about that with a guy in front of me um, today about putting uh, Martinelli in the center. And I, I said, I didn't think it would work, only because he had as a tendency, as a, as a single central striker, I don't think it will work. He's got too much of a tendency to drift out mm-hmm. to the wings. He, he does like to hug the wing and that's where he gets his pace. I think if we had a two or if we had like, you know, a one and a one, maybe he could do something there where one could drop off the other, but you need somebody else fast up there with him. I, I don't know. And uh, apparently we're um, Arteta fan FC. What was that? King Droll yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, let's, let, let, let's, let's give uh, some air to this. Uh... <laughs> so our, our Arteta fanboys, FC fanboys, go well, listen, I was here long before Arteta. I'll be here long after Arteta. I was here long before you, King Cairo, and I'll be here long after you, King Cairo. And I'm and sure Mike and Jared will be. And and you're and you're welcome to come on uh, openmike.com and and uh, and spout that as well. That this is the kind of thing that 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 does piss me off. Um, and you know, and and well done. I mean, I you know, it's it's not that. that you achieve something. You come on, this spoiling. Yeah. yeah, but uh, <laughs> but you know it. it you're really hard, King Creo. That's all I got to say. And and Fitz, who did come on uh, with us earlier, and we appreciate him coming on earlier. And 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 Fergus, I'm guessing you didn't see. Uh, I did. He was actually uh, he was very very good. I didn't agree with all he said, but you know what I did like. Even if we're on polar opposites in in probably where we are coming from uh, around the team and what what's going on, I liked the way the guy was very balanced and he wasn't shouting, screaming. And, and and sensationalized and everything. He said his facts, he said his opinion, he said his piece, and he was open to listen to yours as I'm open to listen to his. And it doesn't seem as he's uh, as big of a fan of you as you are of him. <laughs> um, I, you know, no, I, listen, I'll, I'll, I'll accept anybody's opinion. I don't have to agree with it. And, and well, and again, it, it's when, when you talk about viewpoints on the, about the club, when you talk about your feelings about Arteta's management, his coaching, Cronkies, which is a whole nother topic that, you know, if Russ came on with us today, I'm sure we would have been talking about. Uh, there's a lot to complain about. Opinions are perfectly, you know, perfectly wonderful. Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to like this. See, 
I, I get along with a lot of people who have opinions that, that about the club that I just diametrically you know are opposed to or just don't share myself or don't feel as strongly of. Um, but when you when you start turning the the when you start turning the the spotlight on fellow supporters because they don't support the club the way that you think that they should or they're not they don't get angry at the club the way that you think that they should. Um, that. I will never stop speaking against because you know again this this club is <laughs> and and feel free to 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 get mad at me for saying this this club is about more than just constantly winning and getting mad when we don't um and it, it will cease to be as fun if the club becomes a joke on the pitch uh i don't think you know having an opportunity at fourth place is being a joke but you know there's there's a lot of instability at the club right now but uh, when you start calling fans part of the problem you know that's an issue for my, me. my two two final points and i'll let the uh, other people come on but uh the first thing is on that just to finish up on that one there's so many channels including this one and other channels as well which uh, love to to go on the negative side of things rather than looking at the positive things uh yeah i don't accept mediocrity i don't accept uh you know failing i want us to be in the Champions League, I want us to be challenged for the Champions League, and I also want us to be challenging for the league. But where we are right now, we wouldn't last five minutes in the Champions League, but we need to be pushing and getting there. European football has got to be our key target. At the beginning of this se uh, season, I wanted six as the minimum. I think four, fourth is the target um, that we need to get to. Um, uh, but I don't know if we're, if we're going to be good enough to get fourth this season. We'll be depending on other results and a huge January transfer window. If we before don't have a huge transfer we Before today, I, fourth was literally ours to lose. And, you know, eight, 17 games left. It's still ours to, to win. But, uh, you know, we're not going to cruise into fourth place in any way, shape, or form. Now, I know how handsome I am, but there's no – I mean, to call me a model, uh, Wes Midgooner, um, <laughs> you know – I thank you. I really I appreciate that. I've I've never it's been considered for modeling jobs, but the, the the get rid of the American model is an interesting comment in that the two teams that they own over here are both doing very well and still active in the playoffs in their respective sports and are doing far better than Arsenal right now. And it works well, okay for um, Liverpool, doesn't it? Moneyball. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. well, they thrive in the American model, which is revenue sharing, guaranteed participation. I mean, they, they, look that. Josh Kroenke told us when we interviewed him in 2019 um, that he understood that football was a completely different sport than the, the teams that he owns here in the United States. And that, but that he felt, and the, and the thing that I disagreed him about was that he felt that their model, younger coaches, uh, you know, kind of more of the, the quote unquote money ball model of identifying and developing talent rather than, uh, just you know, starting out with a uh, you know with a Galactico type of approach would work, and that's where I said eh, I'm not so sure that you know. So you recognize it's different, but you want to treat it the same. It, it, it can work, but not when everyone's if everyone's not batting with the same ball. In the sense, like if you got a City and a Chelsea out there, it makes it more difficult. He also told us to be excited. I wasn't very excited today, Mike. I was cold. I was fed up. I was bored. I had ten days without a beer. And I've cracked one open today. So on that note, I'm going to enjoy that one beer I'm going to have. Take care, Fergus. Good to see you, mate. Thanks, Happy Fergus. Arsenal. Cheers, guys. All right. um, so if, uh, all I could say is I, I'm saying it's about more than winning. I'm not saying it's not about winning. Uh, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with wanting your team to win. I want my team to win. Jared wants his team to win. Um, and I think I've just uh clarified my position that respectfully criticizing or even disrespectfully criticizing the team when we play badly is not only acceptable but it's something it, it's balance it, it's you know especially when you can when you can you know when you and and Dan Potts and many others can can verbalize it in a way that many of us wish that we could I can't go on a negative rant against Arsenal because I don't really know how to verbalize my frustration and target it. You guys can, and and you do when it's appropriate, and you don't when it's not appropriate. Uh, so, you know, again, I, I I hope you're just saying that you're sick of that narrative amongst other people and many people who, you know, who who divide people into the positive and negative camps. 
but I've always been against that. Uh, my issue is in criticizing other fans, other supporters for the way that they do that. And it goes both ways. So, um, so, you know, again, we, you and I know each other and where we come from very, very well. Um, and you know, I, I just sense that you, that you were being a bit uh, defensive there and I hope it wasn't about us. Um, cause look, we, you need to hear the negative sides of things, but when you start saying that fans like Fergus or fans like the American model, which that might stick more than magic Mike, you think, um, you know, that, 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 that we or others like us are part of the problem. That's where, that's where I get the hump and I don't have the bell to ring, but, uh, all right. So we're going to bring on Colin. Um, and, and I need to plug my computer in before I crash. So, uh, so, uh, Jared, Colin, take it away for a minute. <laughs> What's up, Colin? How you doing? Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, uh, well, I've, I've had better days, but <laughs> glad to see you <laughs> back. One of our more regular people on the open mic. So we've kind of covered a little bit of everything today. I know there's a pretty strong feeling about Arteta after today's game, the, the trajectory of the team as a whole. Kind of, What are your thoughts coming off of today's game? I, I assume you're as, at least frustrated like the rest of us, if not uh, ready to burn the place down. Quite, quite frustrated. Yeah. Um, yeah. The f- first point that I wanted to make, you know, today is um, so I saw Sophie earlier on in the chat mention, you know, that that line of when we play well, it's big up Arteta. And when we don't, it's players got to do better. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, I need to admit that I think that I've been a little bit guilty of that in, in past seasons. Um, I think I have as well at times. I don't think yeah. that's a, an uncommon thing. I think she's yeah. pretty spot on with that general yeah. sentiment. I think, I think, I think I was guilty of that towards the end of the Wenger era. I think I was guilty of that with Unai Emery's managerial career, um, and I think I've been a little guilty of that with Arteta too. I don't know what it is, but I just I really like rooting for our manager. Um, but well, I think what, that- what, it, what it is for me is I I don't I. It's easier to change a manager than it is to change eleven players. Of course. So, you know, when we play poorly, I I just I feel like it's just it all comes crashing down on one person. Yeah. And and I have a, I guess a little bit of sympathy over that, but I but I agree with you. I think it's a it's certainly a valid opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's something you know. that I think that I've you know I, I've been guilty of that, and and today's one of the days where I just sort of had to step back and be like, you know, I don't normally feel this way after a performance, but I. I, I, I don't like the way I think there's a lot of blame that you can put on a, a, a ton of areas. But at the end of the day, I, I do think that Arteta is really responsible for today. Um, you could mention players lackluster performance. You could mention Edu and his lack of activity in this window thus far. You could mention Shaka and Party being sent off stupidly to get us in this position where our midfield is so dire. Like the, obviously it's not just one person, but um, the reason why I put so much of this on Arteta today is how, how many times under his managerial career are we going to see Arsenal play like this against a low block? It's just been happening too much. Pretty much his entire career we've struggled to break down a low block. When you think about this season's performances, some of them against low block, Norwich at home towards the beginning of the season, we squeaked by with that 1-0. Burnley away, the reverse fixture at Burnley, we had the 1-0. Um, Newcastle was decent with that 2-0 win. That was maybe our best one. Um, Watford at home, we sort of squeaked by with the 1-0 win. It's an absolutely um, embarrassing sort of level of play that we tend to bring to these games where the other team just doesn't really want to actually pressure us at all because you know the two or three good moments that we had from this game were basically came from you know two or three moments where Burnley actually you know may have had you know a few minutes of possession or had a decent counter-attack shout and we were actually able to find some level of space and transition the ball with some sense of urgency. Um, but other than that, if they just, you know, did what they did and went, you know, we're going to stick eight guys in our own box, good luck. It's looked like that for the last two years now. That's what we've seen. We've seen dozens and dozens of crosses going to the area, not really anyone in particular. Um mm-hmm. 
Well, and we, have no tar- we have no target man for those crosses. Yeah. Aubameyang isn't just, a target man for those crosses, even if he were fit and firing. I mean, it's just really worrying. And it's making me think that, you know, it's a glaring weakness in Arteta's, uh, you know, tactical know how. Um, because, you know, City can kind of get away with stuff like this because they've got 11 players who are just good enough to make something special happen. And we can't rely on that every single time, especially when we don't have, you know, our 11 best players all at 100% fitness firing. Um, And so, you know, to me, that's a big part of why I feel so disappointed today, Um, just because it just feels like, you know, how long have we seen this under Arteta? Pretty much isn't ever since he was appointed as head coach, we've seen, you know, performances like this against the bottom teams who, especially at home, where they're just thinking, you know, let's just play for the draw. And that's what they did. And and they did it better than we were able to play our game. They did. And it's such small margins in the Premier League. You know, when you look at that Lacazette finish at the end that went just wide, if he puts that in the back of the net, we all come away from this game saying, yeah, we were poor. We got the three points. That's all that mattered. Now we've got 18 days until our next game. We can bring in reinforcements were set forth you know it, it's such a small margin from what would make arsenal fans happy to where we are now and and that makes it difficult that means you have almost no room for error and uh, as it was winding down in the game I, I i tweeted today you know we saw this week tottenham and manchester united get late goals on games where they weren't playing fantastically to come away with three points those are the type of goals your team has to be able to to get in a top four race though they're, they're vital and the other teams in the race with us are managing to do that, and we're just not. So, like I said, it's fine margins, but when you're on the wrong end of those fine margins consistently, you can't expect to get the results you want, and unfortunately, that's where we're sitting right now. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, we've got 17 games left and a lot of fine margins to work out in our favor, or it's going to be a long, angry summer. <laughs> uh, so... I think we're gonna we're gonna go to one more, uh, Colin. Anything else you wanna you wanna bring up uh, about today's game? I mean, we we we've pretty much covered every angle. Uh, we've gotten into some interesting uh, areas with regards to to how we all kind of handle failure, uh, with regards to how we look at it team wise, fan base wise, and all that. And there's still a lot of back and forth going on in the chat, which I, I actually appreciate. Uh, you know, and and some of our previous open micers coming into the chat to keep the conversation going. There's a there's a love affair going on between Soph and Fitz now at this point. Um, so please invite us to uh, to to the reception. Uh, I don't know why you've said that. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, so, Colin, anything else uh, you want to point out before we move on to our final open micer of the day? Yeah, just, you know, keeping the fingers crossed with – edu to hopefully be able to get something done just because i think you know i'm pretty sure this was our last match before the window shuts Mm -hmm. right so we've got the international break coming up for i think we got like two and a half weeks or something till our next Premier league fixture so fingers crossed because if that window shuts and we haven't done some serious business you know there's no way our twitter uh our twitter timelines are going to look more positive (laughs) Yeah, let, let's let's not announce any more kits in January. Let's announce <laughs> some more players in January because at this I point, I would love a new kit if you know if uh, if we've got a you know a, a, a new striker sort of uh, being the one modeling it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think you might actually sell more that way. So anyway, Colin, thanks for joining us. Hope to see you under uh, better circumstances soon. Yeah, of course. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care, see buddy. You, Colin. All right, and finishing us off for today, I believe he he's our, he's the closer. Uh, I think Muhammad is, uh, has been on a couple times as our as our uh, as our last caller. Uh, thanks for joining us from Palestine. I remembered this time, um, and uh, you know, you're here obviously to talk about the Rams, right? You're you're here to talk about the the, the Los Angeles Rams and and their big playoff game today that uh, that all the Arsenal players were apparently had on their minds. Uh, let's hear it, my friend. Your daughter, your daughter, or your son seems very upset at the Arsenal. Good evening, uh, Mike. Uh, good evening, all. Uh, you know, I talked with you last Thursday about Liverpool game, the second leg, and I said that I was worried about uh, Burnley game. So I think the writing was on the wall because 
Now I said to you, our team is very thin, it's very short of players. The players that uh, are playing uh, today are not ready. You, you can see this. We were jaded. Uh, our bench was empty. Five uh, youth players. Uh, we we had only Arteta made one change, one change, which is uh, in Ketia. That proves that now we don't have uh, we don't have players. We play with eleven or twelve players, and this is not good in this crucial time of the season, fighting for the top spot. I think dropping two precious point today will affect us. I think uh, uh, fighting for the fourth spot will be very difficult. Uh, the real aim, I think, uh, being in the top six, uh, we lacked creativity. We lacked the extra, the extra quality in the attacking side, to, side of our game. Uh, we had some chances, some good chances. Uh, La Gazette, two very good chances, I think. Must score at least the second one in the second half. Um, we are suffering now. We are suffering. Uh, the good thing is that uh, now we had a long period without, without matches. So we can... Uh, this is the, really, really, Mike, this is the only positive thing. I, 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 I know. I mean, when we're looking forward to not having games, it's it's. I mean, I, I I'm agreeing with you. It's it's just, it's it's a dire situation. Like I mean, I never look forward to the summer, so that I can go three months without an Arsenal game because I, I just I, I'm itching for the next game, and 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 I am in no in no way, shape, or form itching for another game. The next game that we see, I'll be in Las, I'll be in uh, New Orleans, hopefully with with you know hundreds of other gooners for gooner Gras. hopefully it'll be a you know a fun time god forbid we we don't if we lose to wolves in that game wolves will certainly be ahead of us in the table by that point it just gets worse and worse um, this is what three points three points one point even fighting for the top six is will will not be easy because fourth place will be spurs or united and we have another two good teams west ham Wolves and one of United and Spurs fighting for the two places, the fifth and sixth. So we are in a war, in a war to be in the top six. Uh, second thing, uh, as I said, uh, unfortunately, the uh, the most positive thing now is that we have 18 days without uh, a match, so we can recover, we can charge the batteries, we can train more. We can have party and Shaka, and uh, I think Tomiyasu will um, will be absent a few weeks. Elneny will be uh, returning from uh, from Afcon. Uh, another point, Arteta said now changing the tone. It's not his fault. I think it's the board and Arteta uh, and Ido. Uh, a few weeks ago, he he said we will move in the transfer window. We will move. He was fair. Now he said that uh, the window, the market is difficult. He said after barely game. So you can analyze that his tone is changing because Edo is not successfully having a, a good uh, market, and it's this is thing that is difficult for us to take because we lack. We lack an attacker. Look at Laka now, it's an ordinary player. And you have Olin Ketia. And Obama Yang with his problem is out. So another center forward, even alone, was very important to have in the beginning of this window. Also, another midfielder. Now we are, as I said many times, Ido and the board are jeopardizing our season. I think now. Days left. I, I hope. I hope that it will concentrate. Will move more in the market to give us, if not two signing, at least one, one good signing, so we can uh, continue with this battle, being in the top six. 
it's not it's not will be easy you have spurs you have united you have west ham and you have wolves wolves uh, behind your shoulders so you have four good teams you must fight with these teams and yeah. the wolves match the next match is crucial as tottenham match these two matches is a must win match no, it, yeah, it's, especially with Tottenham having games in hand. I think the the North London Derby is a huge one. If we go and put up a bad performance and they take all three away from that game, you know they're well in the driver's seat for the four spot. So I, I'm with you. I think both of those games, anytime you're playing the teams that are you know in the direct competition with you for fourth, are huge. But those two and being played in short succession is going to be an important stretch, and we we've got a lot of work to do uh, in preparation for those two games right now. Personally, I think yes. the whole, I think the whole problem comes down to the refs um, and to Liverpool postponing the game uh, and uh, PGMOL. I mean, I I, I think Arteta has done an incredible job of navigating those things, but he's, he's just a man. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Now, um, final word, Mohammed. If you look at Spurs as a club. And you saw a supporter who agreed to take this picture. <laughs> would you, I mean, would that be enough? Would you, would you quit being a Spurs supporter because you had such Spursy supporters that they would, regardless of whether they're doing better than us at the moment or not, uh, would you pose for a picture like that if you were a fan of a club? <laughs> Mike, let us talk about important things. <laughs> let us talk about <laughs> Arsenal only. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't yeah, like talking about. Life. I don't like. I don't like talking about others, especially Spurs. Just concentrate Arsenal. Just pure yeah. Arsenal. Well, but when they do that, though, it's yeah. Okay, so so uh, yeah, just Arsenal for me. I don't get distracted with any other uh, any other things here. But uh, I never. Talk I hope. About I hope the most. I hope the most important thing is that we beat them. This is the real battle. Absolutely, um, and uh, and like and like the sign that, that, that says, "I am Arsenal till I die." Um, I don't know how long that's going to be, um, or if it's going to be the reason that I die. But uh, but but it's not been fun in January. But what has been fun, Mohammed, is getting to know you over the last few weeks. Uh, we hope that you'll come back. And in general, uh, from the chat, we hope to see some new Thanks. faces in here. We've pretty much been averaging one or two new faces. God, there's a new face right now. For Spurs. Who is that guy? Uh, some porn star just came on for... Uh, some 1970s porn star just came on for Spurs that's getting that bad for them right now. But uh, anyway, uh, Mohammed, great to have you on, buddy. Any uh, any Thank last you. words? Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Doug. Well, join us no, I time. hope that uh, the last days of the transfer market will will make us more excited. Uh, I hope Edo get it right. At least one one signing that help us and we regain all our, our squad and we will finish, inshallah, the season more strongly. Well, I think this we is all our aim well. and this is our hope. And you're getting a lot of... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us for the third time successfully, Mike. Uh, hope... Many times also being in the near future. Thank you. You too, Mohammed. Take care. And give my love to your family. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Thanks, Mohammed. Oh, man. Um, I love this. Uh, AFC fans were all over dynamite. No, they weren't. There was one, <laughs> actually, two. <laughs> one that popped up everywhere. Yes, uh, it wasn't that they were all a over number of different it's, signs. It's that I bought I bought the best possible seats to put all of my different signs up here. Um, <laughs> people were getting a little annoyed with me for these signs, uh, but uh, I don't care because I don't know those people. But uh, but yeah, if you if <laughs> look, this is what I'm talking about. This doesn't help Arsenal in any way, shape, or form, <laughs> but it does get the internet going i love looking at twitter during these shows when i end up doing this kind of stupid I mean, this was the, the, the <laughs> this is the greatest it's bringing together different personalities of mine with hilarious things that unfortunately weren't timed that great because i think four <laughs> hours before that they or three hours before that they had just nicked a win uh, uh at leicester but uh 
I'm just trying I to just have love fun. seeing it. And, and I love that when you have that sign, it just happens that there's a guy two rows in front of you who rocks up in a Tottenham Harry, Harry Kane kit. Yeah. I mean, the, well, he wasn't there Wednesday, but on, 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 on the Friday show, he was there. And he, he, I mean, who agrees to take a picture like this? I mean, no Arsenal fan would. He, he was he was nice about it. I felt bad because I was taking advantage of his niceness. Uh, and and it is a Kane jersey that he's wearing, by the way. So I, you know, I was three rows behind him and having to stare at the, uh, you know, Kane on the back the whole time. Uh, but you know, look, I'm, if you don't ask, you don't find out. And I had to, I had to see if he would be that Spursy that he would actually, you know, pose for that picture. So he's had uh, a lifetime of of shortcomings and, and rough days. One more picture isn't going to hurt him. Yeah. Somebody doesn't. Really, yeah. I know it was two different shows. Rampage was live this week. Both shows were in DC and, and I was in DC for both of them. But, uh, but look, it's about having fun. It's about publicizing the arsenal. It's about getting people talking. Uh, everybody does that in their own ways. I do it through stupidity. You do it through really good, well-reasoned uh, points of view that I then trample over with my own talking and stupidity. <laughs> Sophie does it in a magisterial way on her podcast with the great Kevin Campbell and, and the other folks on Lee judges TV do it in their own way. So, Absolutely. Um, you know, this always helps. I, I was so angry oh, after the game today. I'm still angry in an arsenal way, but again, just having this chat in this forum to, uh, to hang out together and to talk and to get different points of view and, and, uh, and, and even try to have a laugh and to meet new people like Muhammad from Palestine. I mean, uh, you know, I don't think it's any secret. I'm a, I'm a Jewish guy from Washington DC in like absolutely loving talking to, uh, you know, Muhammad from Palestine about the, the thing that, that we have in common rather than the things that we might have different from each other, uh, focusing on the arsenal and our love for it. So, uh, thanks to the chat. Thank you. Dio Brindo. Thank you. Lone star Londoner. Uh, you were high profile in this chat as always. Appreciate it. Olivier, Sophie Schrodinger's cat's flap. Uh, we had Dial <laughs> Square name. 1971. Wes Midgooner was in the in the chat today. Tony W. Velma Ren Kelly. Uh, Fergus in the chat. Uh, hot debut from Fitz today. We appreciate your uh, points of view, uh, whether Definitely. we agree with them or not. Uh, Drago, the Bulgarian Gooner, was in the chat today. Tanche Tabang uh, was in the chat. King Creo. Can't say I loved your contributions, and uh, and you, you you're not interpreting a lot of what we say the right way. If you think that you can't have opinions, that isn't what we said. But you're welcome here anytime, and uh, hopefully the show. Will continue. I'd love to see love to see King come on after the Wolves game. We would love to have you for sure. Yeah, you know this is the, this is the one show, the one type of show I should say, where you can uh, you can not just have your opinion in the chat, you can get it out. And frankly, the stronger your opinions are in the chat, the more we're going to want to see you in uh, in in. On, on the open mic because it's one thing to type something. It's another to say them to somebody. So, uh, so that's what the show is all about until next time, wherever and whenever that may be. Uh, Jared, great to see you again. You too. Rough day, but another weekend where Arsenal is going to end above Spurs in the table. So I guess we'll take it and tune in. Uh, you know, we are, uh, we are part of the Gooners podcast, uh, which is uh, you can go to our page at Goonersubscribe.com. Uh, if you like the content, what we do on our, on our show is a little bit different. We're going to do a, uh, we do a guest based show and on Tuesday night, as it is the transfer window, Tuesday night, 9 PM UK, we are going to be joined by my friend, uh, and very, very talented, ju uh, journalist, also wrestling fan, Charlie Watts, uh, Charles Watts is of gold.com is going to be joining us. You're not going to want to miss that. That's 9 PM UK time on the Gooners podcast channel until then. 